Hey everybody, it's uh, Two Comic Book Dudes here with our new Comic Book Day Spectacular show number one. Uh, just something new that we're going to try. Uh, really pretty much just showing you the comics we got today and going, ooh, aren't those cool? Talking a little yeah. bit about them and uh, hopefully getting you excited about comics each week. So it's kind of what we're here for, right? That's right. That's right. We're just going to kind of show you what's in the store right now. So if you went to the comic book store today, this, this is the kind of stuff you can get. So yep. it's always fun to see like what's there. It kind of helps you decide like, you know, cover art. Honestly, everybody's got to agree. Cover art will make you pick a book up and at least look at it. So. Yeah, for sure. And you know, there may be something that we got that we'll talk about and you'll be like, Oh, I didn't even know that's what that was. And then you'll be like, I gotta get that tomorrow or whenever you come back to the shop again. So exactly. um, hopefully you, hopefully you have a local comic shop. Um, that's really the the key is, you know, getting a relationship with the local shop, um, getting in there, telling, you know, doing your weekly pull, getting a discount. That's a big thing. I know. Sorry, Justin. If your shop has <laughs> that type of thing. Yep. So anyway, uh, I will do some introductions. I'm Aaron Clutter, editor in chief of Comic Booked. That's our website uh, where we review comics. Uh, we do comic news, movies, TV, all that good stuff, and and games too. So uh, just about anything you want to find, check out our website. Um, with me, as always, is our managing editor. Hey everybody, I'm Justin. How's it going? Really excited about this show. Really pumped about the new week. <laughs> You look so excited. I mean, oh, I'm pumped, man! This is great. <laughs> Do it. Oh, yeah. Also, so, also, let me say this: um, if while we're going through this, if you see that we didn't get a book that you really like, and you'd like us to talk about it at some point in the future, just leave a comment below, and I'm sure we'll be able to pick it up, and take a look at it. Okay. Or we'll tell you that it sucks, and that's why we didn't buy it. True. <laughs> oh, did I say that out loud? Sorry. There um, are books. Yes. Yeah, so, it happens. The, there are. Um, in fact, I had to pull, it pulled one for me this week and I actually put it back because I said, I can't buy this. It sucks. Um, and I'll talk about that after you talk about your first couple. So we're going to start off. We'll do this publisher by publisher, sort of. Um, Justin, we'll start with uh, DC. DC. I got a couple, just a couple DC books. And I think I'm actually probably going to go back and get another one. But that's neither here nor there. Um, just so it's oh not crap. the one. I may actually go back and get two DC books now if I'm thinking about it. But whatever. I picked up uh, Justice League United. This is issue number 11. Um, and this has been on a very, very long hiatus since uh, pre convergence. And I want to say even a month or two before convergence was even started. So this has been off the shelves for at least four months, it seems. I was going to say, have they even had a book out this year? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> it's I don't not what I, I follow. To, I don't. I have to go back. I mean, I have them all, but I can't remember. It's been so long. Yeah. So I yep. mean, I was even looking through this one just to begin with, and not even sure if it's still all of the same team team members or oh, they've been switched around. So that's never good. This book could be iffy. Not sure what's going to happen with that. All right. The next DC book I got is probably the biggest DC book this week. Of course, is Batman Forty Two, or so also known as. Robot Bunny Batman. Robot Bunny Batman, Gordon. <laughs> yeah. Gordon Batman yep. Bunny. But he has a really, really cool uh, stealth bat suit that he wears while he's inside it. Um, oh, cool. So, so that's really cool. It's like, uh, I can find it here. Maybe if they have a good picture of it. They probably won't because I want to find it really quick. <laughs> no, of course not. Of course not. Well, whatever. But it's really cool. Um I don't know. I'm kind of interested to see where this goes, especially the cliffhanger they left us with in issue 41. So see who that man was in the park. So, yeah, and, and Batman's gone right now. So there is no, there is no Batman. We don't know where he is. Okay. Just not to spoil anything, but Batman is not in this book. <laughs> I don't know. Was he in, was yeah. he in issue 41? <clears throat> we don't know. I mean, he could have been somebody else, but he wasn't in there. Like so the Gordon, very last Batman, page. The Robo Bunny Batman. Yeah, but the well, very right. last page. There was a guy. We don't know who it is. Could be. That's, that's what I'm Bruce saying. Wayne. That's what I'm saying. We don't know. Yeah, who knows now with continuity? It could be Thomas Wayne. Could be anybody. Right. 
Right. But I kind of like those stories. If you take this, if you don't get upset that Batman's not Batman right now and just take it as like stories we've had in the past where other people stepped in while Batman was healing up or whatever the reason may be. So just take it as that. You know, you're going to get Bruce Wayne back soon enough. But just just like Peter Parker, just like Peter Parker in Marvel, he can never go away forever. All right. Right. Yep. All right. So what are the two books you're going to have to go pick up? Um, Justice League America, number two, because I kind of, I just, I don't know, I'm going to get it. And I'm going to pick up, um, Batman Superman 22, which I've never read Batman Superman, but with the changes that have been going on with Batman, and then I've, I've heard about all the changes with Superman, him losing his powers and things like that. I just kind of want to check, I just kind of want to check that story out and see what they're doing with it. Yeah, it looks like I mean the cover looked pretty cool. I saw Justice across the Batman Superman cover. Right. So it it almost tempted me to buy a DC comic, but then I was like, no. no. So um the one DC comic that got in my pull that I had to say, please take this away and burn it, um, was Constantine number two. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Constantine the Hellblazer number Hellblazer. two. Awful. Number number one was horrible. I mm. bought it, brought it home, read it, and immediately went and had to take a shower. Because it was oh. just that. It was gross. It was awful. I mm-hmm. I just couldn't stand it. I was the story was horrible. The the art was bleh, and bleh. I'm just like, this is not the Constantine that I know. Sorry. Um, like, so yeah, immediately dropped the book. Wow. Well, there you go. That happens, you know. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I I'll tell you, I don't talk bad about books. I I mean if I read a book, I have something good to say about it. That book was just there was uh, it was cheap, it's, you yeah. know. But, That's what oh, it sounds yeah. like. They didn't yeah. give it to like a, a top tier team. They gave it to like some. Yeah. And you know the last team. series, uh, the the Constantine series ran up through what like twenty two or twenty one, twenty two. That was the last series was excellent. I really, really liked the story there. They did a great job with that. And then this post convergence. Yep, yeah, I don't know. Pretty sad. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> next, we're gonna jump into that's it, that's it for DC, right? Yep, that's it for DC. Yep, and I actually didn't get any DC comics this week. I really don't get very many. Um, I get Batmite and Bizarro because they're awesome, and then I get He-Man, you know. Um, and I think the only other two books that I'm getting from DC right now are Justice League 3001, which is which still is pretty, pretty good series. Good. Yeah, I yeah. just picked it up. Yep, yep, and uh, of course it's written by, um, isn't it written by Dan Abnett, who's like my favorite. I think so. Yeah, he stayed uh, on the I'd book. Have to dig. He stayed on yeah, the book yeah. from three thousand. So yeah, same yep. writer. So it's excellent. So that's uh, you know I like him writing uh, He Man. I love him him writing the Justice League. It's just really good. Um, and then I get Harley Quinn because I like uh, Jimmy Palmi, Amanda Connor. So um, that's it. I don't. I don't, I don't get anything I don't, else. I don't blame you. I've I've talked with um, several people that do that have YouTube channels and do reviews and things like that online. And um, you know, question that we've been tossing around is, are you getting more or less DC titles post convergence? And more everybody is saying less. <laughs> yeah, it's sad. I mean, it, it almost feels like they've they've cut off their nose to spite their face. And and I, I don't know. I, we'll see. That yeah. things may change. You know, they may come back around and have something great. And we'll all be just like, oh, we got to scramble for all these books. But I I'm not seeing it right now. So. Okay. Onto a, a onto a publisher that is doing great things from the creator own perspective. I mean, awesome books that uh, I've been really impressed with. Almost everything I picked up from them, um, Image. So I've got a, a few Image books I want to just talk quickly. About. Um, first one is Injection Number Three that came out. Nice. Beautiful but, cover. I love oh, yeah. you know on there. Um, this is a great new Warren Ellis series, and just like any Warren Ellis series. Um, it's, it's a long play story. You know, it's not something that you're going to get into and immediately know what's going on. It's like trees. Trees is a great series, but there were times there in issue four and five where I'm going, what the heck is going on with this? Yeah. Is, are we it's going somewhere? You know, slow burn, just, slow burn. Yeah. But it's, it's really good. This is a great, great series so far. I just started reading issue three, uh, and definitely some, some good jokes spattered in there with, with some interesting stories. So a lot of weird, uh, kind of mystical fairy, fairy kind of stuff going on. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, next one I picked up. Well, this is actually a back issue, but this is still a great series. 
Um, Joshua Williamson is doing Birthright. Yeah. And this was issue number five. I, you know, I love that cover. It's awesome. But it was a back issue that I had missed. For some reason, I had it in my pool. I got one through four, missed number five. I have six through eight. Mm -hmm. um, so I started reading one of the later issues. And I'm like, I'm, I can't believe I missed part of the story. What happened here? <laughs> like, and I was missing an issue. So, you know, it's kind of funny. Yeah, great series. Um, I agree. Yeah. And then I'll do one more and then I'll pass over to you. Um, Shutter, number 13, is out. And this is another... Really cool story. I love the artwork. Um, Joe Keating is writing this excellent series. You know, just I, I can't say enough about this. What is, what is that series, series about? You know, <laughs> this uh, this That's girl question. is question. she's uh, she was a um, her her father was an adventurer, and so she went on adventures with him, and always thought she was an only child, and he. Uh, disappeared or passed away, or, you know, was gone, mm -hmm. and she became a photographer and travel an adventure and traveled around and took pictures and and adventurized everywhere. Right um, now, she's kind of retired from that life, and she gets pulled back into it, and finds out that she's got uh, siblings, like multiple siblings, all over the place, and they're all oh, trying wow. to kill her. Daddy was and busy. there's all kinds of yeah, it's all kinds of weird other otherworldly things, some dimension hopping. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you, anything else, you have to read it for scenes like this. Oh, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> and the artwork is really cool. The story's great. Uh, you know, there's there's always some fun stuff in the back. Um, in this one, there's Biff and Derry Save the Universe in Five Pages by Sam Spina. Uh, so it's, you know, and it's kind of cartoony, but still cool looking. Can't be that. You know, just... Just some fun stuff all the way through. It's it's a it's a great series, and I love it when you use the inside of the covers for you know for telling the story. Right. That's the actual inside front cover. So instead oh, of wow. like an ad or something, it's it's part of the story. So that's awesome. it's pretty neat. But that was a great that's a, a great series so far. So I'm real excited to read that new one. Awesome. What do you got all for right. image? Okay, the one image book I got is. Uh... A book that actually came out 22 years ago and is relaunching now. So the original is Bloodstrike, uh, right? And so I got <laughs> Bloodstrike number one. And cool. It, you know, it's fun. It's going to be, and I, I looked through it. It's all the same original characters are in here in some capacity or another. Or at least the art of the characters is the same. I'm not sure if they're all the same. Whatever. And it's a relaunch, right? It is a complete relaunch, yeah. I think... Uh, okay. So, I, I don't know. I'm excited about it just from more of a nostalgia feel, I guess, if you want to say that. Yeah. But we'll, we'll see what good old Rob has up, up his sleeve <laughs> towards this time. Yeah, he's had a couple of books. Um, the, the other one, his other one that came out today, which I didn't pick up, but his first issue came out a month ago, and then oh yeah, that one. I I didn't get the second issue. I, I'm still debating. I the first it, issue it was, was interesting. It was, on, it was on the back. I didn't get it. Oh, okay. So is that just an advertisement for it? It's not like yeah. a flip book. No, it's not okay. a flip book. <laughs> I thought I he was like, "Here, you're gonna buy this no, book too." No, no. <laughs> like yeah, Marvel, it was, it, showing Black Widow down your throat. Right, right. Well, the first issue was good. It was an interesting <laughs> story. It's set like biblical times, you know, and the covenant, like the Ark of the Covenant kind of thing. Right. So, uh, it it's interesting. I I kind of want to read it, but I just didn't have room this week to pick it up. So, I understand. Yeah. So my uh, my next image book, because I have still quite a few, um, which played one eighty three top cow. Awesome image so this is a great cover uh, i really have liked the way this story's been going it's pretty cool um you know you, we've had some shake up since uh that um sarah pazzini went off from being uh the wheeler of the witchblade and took off to new upstate new york and became a little sheriff small town sheriff mm -hmm. um, she did get the witchblade back a couple issues ago and now she's just not happy with people. So <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see what happens with this. But Ron Mars is doing a great job with this. Um, Francesco Mana does the uh, the art in this. And it's just beautiful. Um, it, I heard I heard that book was actually coming to an end soon. Really? I haven't heard. So I'll have to, I'll have to check on that. But mm -hmm. I, I've liked this so far. This has been good. 
I actually picked up a few back issues at the sidewalk sale they had at my local shop this past week. So like number 39 and number 46 or something. So some older issues. Um, had to pick a... up. Ah, The Walking Dead. Yeah, 144. I understand someone dies, but I'm not going to tell who because I haven't read it yet. So, and I've tried tried not to read spoilers. And you were going to say you have. Do what? You were going to say something before I so rudely interrupted oh, with another comment. No. Sorry, it didn't matter. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> All right. Still on the image stuff. Uh, Rick Remender's Black Science. Awesome series. Really, really like this. Um, this story, you know, it just keeps going directions that I don't expect. So I've really, really liked it. Um, this is another dimension hopping book. You know, you've got this guy who created this thing called the, um, well, now I can't remember. That's awful. Um, not the tower, the something anyway, the, um, so now I have to read it to find out what it is anyway. To, created this thing and mm-hmm. was able to pop from dimension to dimension with it. And uh, the problem is that it seems to just make things worse the more dimensions they they pass through. And they're actually reaping the whirlwind of people who have passed through dimensions ahead of them because there's other other versions of them who've done the same right. thing. So they're mm-hmm. running into the after effects of them. Like this last world they were on was uh, a plague had, had devastated the population. The plague was brought by another version of him that had traveled there with the uh, the pillar, they call it the pillar. I remembered, um, but it's it's excellent, really great series. And this is issue sixteen out this week. So, um, if you get a chance, I mean, I don't know, first issues in like fifth or sixth printing, uh, mm-hmm. but you probably can still find it. I know, I think it's been um, compiled in trade as well. Yeah. So it's it's really really and good. Image trades are cheap. Yeah, you get you get four yep. or five issues in a trade for like ten twelve dollars. It's great. Yeah. Um, and then my last image book for this week is Descender, which has just been an amazing book. Um, it's the future. There's been a whole kind of robot. Um, uh, revolution? Yeah, Uprising? robot revolution. Awakening? And, yeah, <laughs> all of those things. And then robots were kind of put down, and now there's some things going on that they need. This little robot, who is like the only one who understands some things going on, uh, to help them with. And mm-hmm. so there's bounty hunters after him and all kinds of stuff. And it's, it's cool because it, it's uh, it, at one point in the, I think last issue, he sort of went offline, but he dreamed. And then when he came back, they're like, Oh, you don't, you know, robots don't dream. You couldn't have dreamed. It was just your, just your brain putting things in order. But he had actually seen all of these other dead robots in the collective. And they had told him, you know, come here, you're going to be our leader and you're going to help us do this. And then when he went back, they were like, no, don't go. So it was interesting. We'll have to see what happens with this uh, issue number five is out this week. And this is Jeff Lemire um, and uh, Dustin Guillen do the art, does the art. And I'm, I just love the artwork, the interior artwork on it. It's just really cool. So uh, great book. And you can probably still pick up one through four um, for that one. Oh, yeah. Um, Jeff Lemire is writing so much stuff now. He's going to be doing. Is that how you say it? I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Hey, we mispronounce everybody's names until they come on and do an interview with us and yeah. they can pronounce your name right. That's your right. incentive. So we'll stop butchering your name when you come on our show for an interview. There you go. Because <laughs> hey, he's doing the Book of Death for Valiant. That's right. That's right. So, that would be crazy. Yep. Yeah, definitely some great Valiant books from him, too. I really, really like those. Um, that's for another show. I didn't get any Valiant books today. So, What's the next publisher for you? Uh, it's the crossover with IDW and DC. Oh, okay. We'll go ahead so and do that one. Do kind of a DC. It is Star Trek Green Lantern issue number one, da, 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 right? da, da, da. And it's <laughs> it's a it's drawn as our new uh, Kirk and Spock, like the new the newest two movies. So yeah, it's, it's Chris Pine, guys. right? And what's his Everybody. name? It looks pretty cool. Um, which one, Spock? Yeah, yeah, I don't remember his name. And Judge, <laughs> and Judge, and Judge Dredd is, you know, the doctor. Oh yeah, so, Bones. That's right. But this one seems kind of cool. It's called the uh, the Spectrum War, because hmm. I guess the across the spectrum of color. Yeah, all the rings. But it looks like they find the the crew of the Enterprise find a dead guardian. 
Oh. So, I don't know. That seems kind of cool. And I, th- yeah. I think this is the first time these two have ever crossed over. So Yeah, I don't think we've ever seen that before. So Worth checking uh, out. Worth checking out. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Well, I've got uh, one book from Black Mask. And I had to pick this up because this was Michael Morisi. I really like his, his his writing, his books, every book that he's put out so far. Um, Transferent is his new one that just came out today. So cool. new number one. Worth checking out. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Uh, great art. You know, the um, uh, Ron Salas does the artwork, and uh, it's pretty pretty neat. Um, so it's kind of looks like maybe terroristy spy stuff, super spy stuff. So uh, it'll be fun. I'll, I'll let you guys know how this is when we do one of these shows next week, hopefully. All right. My next, I'll go through a couple of my other little small publisher yeah, stuff. Yeah, go through all, so, yeah. My next one's Marvel, so take time. Oh, okay. Well, then I can go through all the rest of my books until Marvel. <laughs> yeah. So my next one is Providence, Alan Moore's new series. And this is uh, number two that just came out from Avatar. And it's really, the first book was a very interesting story. In fact, um, one of our folks, a review of it, and then I put a little a comment there on the review because I really, I really liked it. And uh, um, David did the review, and he didn't really like it. He thought that kind of fell off at the end. But I, I think maybe you have to be in the right mindset when you read it, because it's kind of weird. Um, it's set in the Cthulhu mythos, you know, very Lovecraftian. Um, oh, cool! It's it's really a, a very interesting story. So I'm I'm really interested in seeing how they how they did the second issue where it goes, because the first issue was kind of about this guy who. Uh, you know, he talks about this person that he's in love with and um, it kind of shows and, and her. Um, but as the story plays out, some different things happen and uh, he ha- has him going to this, the house of this professor and meeting the professor. And the professor is, uh, he has some kind of disease and he lives in this house where he has ammonia that cools the house down to a very chilly uh, temperature. And it's very similar to one of the Lovecraft stories. Um, I, and I don't recall the name of it, but it, it was one that I actually saw on one of the, um, like the HP Lovecraft presents um, yeah. TV shows from a long time ago, uh, which was pretty neat. Cause I see the story and then I was like, Oh, Hey, that's, you know, reminiscent of that. So a um, lot of stuff crosses over. There's the, um, I, I don't know, the the person that he's in love with in that one, he's a newspaper newspaper guy, turns out to be um, a, a, a transgender woman, um, man, woman. And they, in the end, they go to um, one of the um, these places where they go to kill themselves and they go and sit and they turn on music and gas them and then they die. You can go choose to die. So very weird. Um, pleasure gardens or... Some some kind of gardens, quiet gardens, or something like that. Anyway, it was it so was, was interesting like and weird. Kind and, of assisted suicide or something. Yeah, it definitely was assisted suicide. You go in and say, "I want to die." They go, "Okay, here we'll play some music for you. Here's the gas. You're dead." Yeah, so I'm interested in seeing what happens with number two. I, I don't know. the The first one kind of knocks you for the loop there. If you haven't read it, it's worth picking up at least that first issue just to get hmm. your mind messed up. So yeah. Um. Oh, this Swords of Sorrow, definitely a great, and I got the alternate cover that actually looks like an old book, and it has mm-hmm. a little price tag sticker on it, which is kind of cool. Nice. Um, Swords of Sorrow number three comes out. Great series. It's crossing over all the the, the female characters, good and bad, from the Dynamite universe. Um, so you got Vampirella, you've got Lady Zorro, you've got Irene, you've got... Uh, uh, I, I, Kato... Um, I'm, I'm at a loss for who else is in there. And then the chaos girls, um, you've got, uh, uh purgatory and uh, no, no lady death, not allowed. Oh yeah. That she's in, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah. That didn't go with the chaos things. Uh, really? Brian Polito owns the rights to her. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's really cool. Cause you've got two sides, uh, fighting for really the, the control of the universe in a way. And there, there's the, uh, this woman, who's uh, owns the swords of sorrow and she's handed them out to all of the good ladies. And then the bad guy, the prince is uh, uh, taking all the bad ladies and using them to fight against the ladies. So and it's just issue three, still early in the story, but it's pretty cool. It's been a neat series. 
The ladies fought in the ladies. That's right. Nothing better than that. Uh, except over here at Boom and their Archaea imprint, Lantern City. This has been a really cool series. And I'll tell you what, the artwork on this is another one of those things that is, it's just really great. Um, let me find a good, like a landscape picture or something that you can see. Oh yeah, here we go. This is great. You can just see how detailed the art is and it's really cool. Um, so you have this, this city that's kind of divided into levels and, and a kind of a cast system in place. And mm -hmm. it's really more of like a steampunk society sort of. Um, so the, the story right now, this is issue three that just came out. And the story is basically that there was this guy who um, was just a lowly, you know, lowly farmer kind of guy, but a low, a lower caste type guy. Um, and there's a big fight him and his brother-in-law were in the middle of this um, kind of a protest rally. And mm -hmm. the, the Red Guard comes in. The Red Guard is the elite squadron of, you know, kill people who work for the, the folks in the Ivory Towers. And they come in and they just start killing everybody. Mm -hmm. And he, in the, trying to save his brother-in-law, kills one of the Red Guard. And mm -hmm. so they immediately strip the clothes off the Red Guard and take them back home. And he volunteers to put them on and become a red guard to try to infiltrate and, you know, kind of overthrow the government. Right. Pretty cool idea. Descent Except, from within. Right. At the end of the last issue, though, his plan sort of unraveled because he gets home to the red guard's home and he walks in. He's like, oh, good. And then the red guard's wife and child step out and they're like, who are you? Because he's a white guy and they're black. So you kind of have this, like, how do I explain this? Um, I got scared really bad and I got pale today. You know, that doesn't work. So yeah. it's, uh, it's kind of like that cliffhanger. Yeah, right. <laughs> they transplanted my brain, obviously. So anyway, it's, uh, okay. it's interesting. That's, that's um, <laughs> yeah. So we'll kind of shift gears yeah, from the more, serious, the, the more serious books. We'll shift gears to uh, Bill and Ted's Triumphant Return. We got Bill and Ted and Death there yeah. on the front, so it's excellent. This has been really fun, uh, very fun series. Um, Brian Lynch is writing, and it's it's just very enjoyable. I've really liked it. I loved, you know, both Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, and their triumphant return truly is triumphant. And so, uh, it's pretty cool because uh, Ted Denomalos, you know, who's the bad guy in the second movie, uh, they went mm. forward in time to meet him and kind of befriend him and try to make things right with him. And instead, he goes back in time and steals all of their ideas and becomes them before they become them. Oh, so he pretty much steals their life. Yeah. So now they're trying to make that right. So it's pretty cool. Uh, definitely, if you're a fan of Bill and Ted or just a fan of fun stories, this is worth picking up. And that's uh, number five of six is out this week. So <sighs> I'm almost through my sack. You're good. Um, uh, one more, another boom book that I had to pick up just for the art, if nothing else. But really, I like Mark Wade uh, and J.G. Jones is fairly new to me, but their new new book is Strange Fruit. It's number one of four. It's out uh, today. And the artwork in here it is just phenomenal. I really was impressed. I mean, here's, you know, just a taste of some of the art. Yeah. And if you can't see, it reminds me so much of Alex Ross. I mean, just the detail and I, just amazing. So I really am, am excited to read this one. Um, you know, it's set back in like the 1920s, mid, like the late 20s. So, uh, you know, you've got a lot of different themes going through. Um, it, so it, it's it's interesting. And it's in, uh, I think it's in Mississippi. So Mark, you, you, Mark Wade's writing a ton of books right now. Oh yeah, yeah. But this is definitely the one to watch. Um, I love the covers, real, real thick stock, and the the pages are pretty cool, and and the art is just amazing. So, uh, I think it's worth picking up. I'll let you know more about it next week after I read it. I, yeah. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a review of it this week as well. So, um, keep an eye on that or on our site for that as well. Awesome. Okay, how about uh, Oni Press? Oni Press had a great book come out this week. Invader Zim is invading the pages of your local comic shop. So definitely, you know, I've, I've always liked Zim. 
Um, yep. Gur, you know, my favorite character. Um, so <laughs> when I saw this on the shelf, actually, I, a few weeks ago, I knew it was coming out. I'm like, oh, I emailed my local comic shop. I'm like, hey, there's 14 different covers. Which ones are you getting? <laughs> of course, local comic shop owner didn't respond to me, but they did get two covers. Then they were just the 50 50s, which is this one and the one with the big head on it. So, um, but I got home and I checked. Um, there's another cover that is exclusive to GameStop. And it's only one of the uh, player rewards, so you can cash in your player rewards points. So if you've got 8,000 player rewards points, this is something to cash it in on. There's only 3,000 copies of that total. So if you go on to um, your, your, I think they call it player rewards or pro game rewards or whatever now uh, through GameStop, and you can cash your points in and get that cover. So I did that. I was like, yay. And I had just enough, too. So. Oh, wow. Good job. Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, all right. Dark Circle and Archie. So Dark Circle had the new issue of the Fox out. Did you not pick that up? I thought you were getting that book. No, I dropped it. No, no I dropped that's it. too bad. Did you? I just didn't get I, it this week. I didn't see that cover either. Like there was a red cover and a green cover. Yeah, there's three covers. I always no. try to get the one that's like the odd one. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this is one of the variants. Um, so what issue four is out this week? The Snoring I Corpse. I haven't read three. I think that's why I didn't get four. But. I'm oh, gonna okay. go back. So go. <laughs> put it on your list, right? <laughs> I'll be up to it's, like twenty books to at some point. <laughs> yep, and you know, with all of my hype earlier, I have an article up on the site about uh, Archie ending with issue six sixty six. Uh, which it was sad, you know, I mean, 50 or 50 or 60 years worth of, of one comic running continuously yeah. over that period of time and finally coming to an end. So uh, Mark Wade and Fiona Staples working on this one, Archie number one, the new uh, relaunch, the first time that this book has ever been relaunched in the history of Archie. So uh, pretty cool. Their flagship titles up uh, coming in the next few months, a Jughead. And I believe there's a Betty and Veronica book as well. So be on the lookout for those. I'll pick those up uh, and, and see how they are. Uh, but really cool. Only thing, you know, it, it's good. This is a big deal. But there were like 14 covers. Yeah, all, yeah. They're all over my shop. There were a ton. lot. Yeah. Uh, and then there's exclusives. And so, you know, if you're really a collector and you want to find some cool covers, there are some really neat ones out there. There's one that I, I would love to get my hands on, which is a um, uh, kind of an homage to Sp- Amazing Spider-Man number 200. Where Archie's jumping through the the circle with you know nice. number one or whatever, and he's got like a USB cable instead of a, a, a web, so it's kind of cool. Um, so that's out this week. Number one, I'm sure you can find a copy. And uh, my last ones here were before uh, Marvel. Actually, um, it's kind of funny because it's it's three books, but I had been holding one back, and this is Passaways that I'm getting from Dark Horse. Mm-hmm. So Passaways um, number three, and I was actually able to get a hold of number two as a back issue, and nice. then um, number four I have I think from last week that I haven't read yet. So I have a little catch up to do there, but that's that's a pretty interesting series, um, the time travel one again. So, but uh, some cool stuff. So, <sighs> yeah, yeah, there's a lot of that going on now, mm-hmm. um, but yeah. So now if you're tired of talking, or tired of hearing me talk. Justin, you want to talk about uh, Marvel books? Marvel? How many Marvel I, titles did you get? Um, let's see here. I got um one, two, we may, we may do some three, overlap. four, five, six, seven, eight. I got eight Marvel books this week. And I'll talk about the first one because I really liked it. I got I got seven. Oh, hey, you almost rivaled me. Mm-hmm. Well, 1872, number one. Did you pick this up? I love this book. I read it. It's the first thing. That's the first one I read. Oh, I haven't I read it really, yet. Don't tell me. I haven't oh, read it. It was really good because it's set in the 1870s, you know. Right. So it's... In it's The Valley of Doom. <laughs> yeah, Wild West. Um, Steve Rogers is the sheriff. You know, Tony Stark's the town drunk. Doc Banner's the doctor, right? It's It's really cool. Um, just, just a neat kind of spin on things. So it's, it's worth a read. It's definitely worth picking up. Awesome. Yep. I'm All looking right. forward we'll to do- it. Yeah. That's what I've heard. You know, good things about it, the way it was. And, and it, it's kind of interesting. It's, you know, a good concept or something that you don't really get to see that often. Or I, I don't think I've ever read 
a Steve Rogers as a sheriff in an old West town story. No. So. And there must be one out there because the 1872 is from something, right? If you know out there, put it in the comments. We'd love to hear what it is because I didn't read that book and there I've read a lot be. of Marvel. So yeah, yeah, there has to be something. I don't know. Something yep. to look up okay. later, I guess. All right. So what's what's next on your list? I got Inferno number three. Huh? I did not pick that one up. Mm. So we're continuing I got number our... one. Yeah. See, I, yeah, I got number one. one. I dropped it. Yeah. One was good. Two wasn't amazing. So I'm hoping three is good. I mean, it's so close. And I really enjoyed this story back in the day when it was the actual oh, yeah. part of the storyline was going on. Um, so that's why I kind of got into it. So we'll okay. see if, if uh, Colossus is able to be successful. You know, In his how many attempt to retrieve his sister? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, Who he's completely doesn't want to be okay. retrieved. Well, he's completely okay with like sacrificing like all these X-Men because you know, yeah. <laughs> at least like two die each year or something. So, yep. Whatever. It's funny. What's your next one? Uh, what's one that you're going to pick up tomorrow, actually? Lando number one. Lando. So, I, I've pretty much picked up all the Star Wars books so far, and I haven't not liked any of them. So I, even Princess Leia, which just ended last uh, last issue with number five last week, was it was a really good story. You know, it was yeah. kind of an interesting filler in between uh, New Hope and Empire, and you've got her kind of running around um, trying to collect the the remnants of the. Um, uh, the, of the you know this lost society uh, and so it it was cool it was just um, a, a different kind of a story for her more of the diplomatic uh, uh, Princess Leia that we really don't see in the movies so that was was good um, but yeah Lando you know everybody's favorite scoundrel um, well not everybody's favorite but one of the favorites so uh, has his new series kicking off this week and there's a ton of covers for this one too. And uh, like three or four different variants or 10 different variants or, and there's a $250 sketch cover, which we have in the shop. Uh, so if anybody wants it, let me know. I'll pick it up for you. I'll give you my PayPal information. <laughs> I'm just going to be buying that cover that you said. Yes. Yes. That was on the shelf. Um, mm-hmm. Got my discount. I was happy. Yay. So. Uh, All right. What's next? Okay. Did you get this one? Spider Island number one. I did. I did. Spider Island number one. All right. Yep. Now I didn't read the original Spider Island series. I didn't either. Like in Spider Man. So yeah, this will be new, all new to me. So right, me too. We'll see. Yep. I mean, it looks the art looks really, really good. Yeah. So I'm pumped about it, and we got Agent Venom on the cover here. Oh yeah, cool. The top, who's getting his own book? Um, after this is over, the relaunch, he's getting Venom Space huh. Knight. Not Rom oh, cool. Space Knight, Venom Space Knight. Interesting. Yeah, so that'd be that's cool. That's cool. I always liked Rom, so maybe there's some kind of crossover thing there. That's cool. <laughs> well, you know, he's been with Guardians of the Galaxy now for the last year yeah, or six he has. months or whatever. And, you know, so. Got his you know, symbiont upgraded and everything. Yeah, yeah. that was that was a really cool storyline. I like the way they did that. Yeah, Going back to the planet of the symbiotes and finding Something out that they would... really were supposed to work he together could. with the host right. yeah like wow yeah oh your symbiote's broken that's why he's psychotic you're like oh that explains everything Fix it, please. <laughs> yep that was cool right, How about, uh, the new spider-verse nope i dropped that one really did yeah. you yeah. i i've liked this i love this the noir spider-man really probably one of my favorite incarnations of spider-man that's not a direct Spider-Man, Spider-Man kind of guy. Right. Um, Because I love the um, Shattered Dimensions video game. I think that's the one. Or is it? Yeah, Shattered Dimensions, where you can play as different characters. Oh, as different Spider-Man? Yeah, yeah. You could play play as Spider-Man 2099, play as regular um, Spider-Man, the black suit, symbiote uh, Spider-Man, noir Spider-Man, and then... um, I think that's it. Those four really cool. Um, and then you can get skins that allow you to play as different characters, but it's neat. Cause you get to fight Deadpool, you get to fight um, Hammerhead as noir. You know, it's pretty cool. Uh, Green Goblin as a couple different Spider-Men Craven, the hunters, the first mission. So oh, it's, wow. it's pretty neat. It's really good. That's Craven was really tough. Like the first time I played it, I couldn't figure out how to fight him. He gets you in this bamboo arena and just like beats the crap out of you. Second time I played through, I was like, you're dead. <laughs> so awesome. but uh but i've liked spider verse so far um 
you know, Spider Ham and all that. I mean, I, I always loved Spider Ham, Peter Porker. I got the original series uh, back when that came out. So I think I just good. got burned out on the verse. Really? No, oh, I, just because yeah. it, it wasn't that long ago that we had the 19 part epic with all the tie ins, <laughs> actual Spider Verse. You know, so like, hey, yeah. Man. And I picked all those up because I liked that story. I thought it was interesting. I like when they when th- over and they make sense and there's some continuity. I, right. I enjoy that. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay what's next? Uh, I got Secret Wars 2099, issue number three. Hey, it's me too. Peter David. Yeah. This one, This one I hope carries over. And after Secret Wars, yeah. I hope this gets its own book and keeps going. Because this I, has been really I hope so good. too. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I you know I don't know. I I think that they probably will do some some time things. The twenty ninety nine will fit, but yeah. it it feels to me like we're going to come out at the other side of Secret Wars with one one Marvel universe. Yeah, not multiple dimensions like we've had before. One universe, and then they'll have the the twenty ninety nine world, and they'll have you know everybody will be spread in their own time. So we'll still have the sixteen ninety two or whatever fourteen ninety two. And the 1602, 1602 whatever yeah. it is, 1602, and yeah. the 1872, and then the 2099. So that's kind of cool. Well, I know, I know, we're having Spider-Man 2099. He's getting a new costume. He, oh, cool. he is he going back? Time. See, and that's what I'm not sure about. I think he's going to be back in the present again. Well, now, right now, he's the uh, the head of Alchemax. Right. So uh, that was kind of a twist. It's like, oh, Miguel, what are you doing there as the bad guy? You know. So, all right. Well, my next Marvel title is Max Max Ride, which uh, First Flight has been a pretty good series. If you've ever nice. read any of the Maximum Ride series, uh, mm-hmm. James Patterson wrote this. It's a young adult uh, book series. Uh, really a good story. Max, uh, this is her name is Maximum Ride, and uh, they they all have wings and they have different powers. Each one of them, but they're kids who were trapped in a lab and they escape. And these guys are after them all the time. These giant werewolves called the Erasers and Oh, wow. uh, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a neat story. Though issue four is out this week, um, and it's uh, written by Marguerite Bennett, and it's it's really good. Um, Alex Sanchez does the the, the penciling, and you know the art uh, is again just really cool. So definitely worth picking up. I, I, I've liked the series all the way through so far. Wow, well, I have two left. So what do you got? I got I got three left. So. Uh, Age of Apocalypse, number one. I did not get it. Age of Apocalypse. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, did you read Age of Apocalypse back in the day? Oh, yeah. 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 I still have it somewhere. Oh, yeah. I, uh, yeah. All the single yeah. ways. Yeah. So many. But we get that exact Cyclops. Or, um, sorry. Oh. So, okay. Really, okay. really pumped about that. So, the art That's in here, cool. the art looks really, really good. Um, I'll read it. I'll let you know, like, tomorrow or so, if you need to go pick yeah. it up. <laughs> okay, they had that had a stack this thick on the yep. shelf, so I think it's probably like a hundred copies. <laughs> That's why I'm not worried about. So, uh, go ahead. All right. No, I, I can still I can still pretty much go back and get every copy of Secret Wars and any of the extras. You know, yeah. last week I went back and picked up a Weird Weird World because I hadn't got number one, mm. and uh, something else I went back and picked up like a couple weeks later just because oh, that'd be interesting to read. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Um. Well. I don't know. We saved that for last. Yeah, I got two left. So, oh, no. So I got a different one than you because I have different back cover. So we know what this one is, right? This one? This one? Yeah. This one's probably the same. Yeah. Yeah. The Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows. Yeah. Number two is out. Um, first issue was pretty cool. You know, I'll quit being Spider-Man. Everything will be happy. Yeah, it's not going to be happy. You know it's not. So... It'll be cool. Still got that bad guy. Yep. So, All right. What's your What's your final issue? The one that I'm really, really looking forward. I was, you know, I did a review of this one. I really liked it. It is uh, Squadron oh, Sinister, yeah. issue number two. Yep. That's. So, I keep meaning to go back and pick up number one, and I completely forgot. And I can't believe that you did not get. I'm getting it tomorrow. Civil War number one. I mean, yeah. the, it, you have to choose a side. I did, and, it, and then it ended. <laughs> yep, and I was yep. happy with the ending. And now it started up again, and who oh, knows no. what's going to happen. So, yeah, I was excited. You know, this was a great series. Um, I still, I went back, when I went back and cataloged all my comics, one of the things I had was that first 
that beginning of the Civil War, the kickoff where um, uh, what's his name blows himself up and kills all those kids. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the new mutants or the new warriors yep. are chasing him. Right? Yeah, and uh, what was his name? Like, um, I don't remember. Some kind of Pyro. explosive. Yeah. No, not Pyro. See, he doesn't C- even matter. CO two boy. <laughs> <laughs> something like that like whatever <laughs> he's got a name something explosive um but anyway yeah Best, he, uh, it wasn't he blew plastic, himself up. was it plastic no no that's a girl <laughs> um but he did have a name like that i don't know if you know his name put it in the comments who knows maybe you'll win something probably not we this don't week, remember but, um that's right <laughs> so that was it for me for this week not that that wasn't enough um but yeah, also, I, I guess I have to talk about this because I went back and I'm looking, you know, I always walk through the shelves. And um, one of the things I picked up, um, I'm still trying to find issue, I don't know, like number five of the the Fade Out, another mm-hmm. image book, Ed Brubaker's book. Pretty good series, but I'm missing an issue, so I'll have to find out. But then I went through and I found the first issue of Egos from Image, um, which is a cool series. I had the first issue. I know I bought this thing. Um, Stuart Moore writes this. And I'm pretty sure I did a review of this on the site a while ago and I went back and tried to find the first issue and it's nowhere. Like Mm. wherever lost socks go, that's where this went. It's there. Like there's a stack of lost socks with this comic book and the first issue of deadly class. I I don't know. So I found it on the shelf. I'm like, I'm going to buy it. Yeah. So I have a copy now it's going in a box and I will not lose it. So yeah. That was it. There was a ton more books this week. Um, yeah, Valiant yeah. had two great books. What Bloodshot Reborn number four is out this week. Right. Um, and definitely Unity 19. Unity 20. Unity 20, yes. Week. Yeah. Yep. So pretty cool ones. You can probably even still get uh, the Exo Man of War wedding issue from last week, number 38, which Very is really story. worth picking up. Yep. We'll be we'll have a, a Thursday's Valiant effort here up uh, tomorrow for you guys. So we'll go through five books there. And you can also check out on our channel uh, the Xenoscope uh, review that we did on uh, for Monday, which was just another Xenoscope Monday. And we reviewed two books that yep. I don't remember right off the top of my head. Do you? Oz. Oh, uh, yes, Oz, Oz. Reign of the Witch Queen. And Wonderland. Yep. And Wonderland. So both of those, Wonderland 37, Oz, Reign of the Witch Queen, number three. Yep. Uh, good books, great books. So, uh, you know... Uh, Again, just us talking about comics. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. Uh, maybe it gave you an idea of something to go out and pick up. If not, you know, you don't have to watch it. I mean, you guys just watch what, like 25 <laughs> minutes worth of us talking about comics, and you're like, boy, this sucked. Comic Sorry. books. Can't give that back to you. We're, just, but, we're you not know. even really talking about the stories. We're just showing you what to look <laughs> <That's right>. at. <laughs> Covers are cool. Art is awesome. You should buy. <laughs> anyway. Whatever. It's great. <laughs> You know, we don't get paid for this. That's the whole thing. It's it's about uh, a love of comics and trying to get more people interested and involved. Um, and then, you know, I can always say that the alien made me do it. Right here. That is He's a little like creepy. Whispering, yeah. whispering in my ear. So it would be creepier if he started moving like, uh, uh. anyway, my daughter won that at a local fair or something or her boyfriend won it for her. I don't know. She calls him nice. Alfred or Albert or something. So, yeah, pretty funny. Um only other thing I bought this week was I bought a few packs of DC and uh, Marvel Dice Masters. Nice. Now, this is a cool game. So if you're if you're a collector uh, for DC and comic or DC and Marvel comics, you might be interested in this game. It, you know, it's got some uh, my little box of goodies here. It's got some pretty cool um, dice that come with it. Uh, I'll hold one up like that. What are they four sided? They're four. They're, yeah, four sided. No, they're they're regular six-sided oh, dice. Oh. Um, this is Nightcrawler's dice. You see his little tail there. And Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider is actually pretty cool looking. So, But each each die represents a character. Um, here's the thing. You can see how he looks like the thing. It's kind of cool. And, uh, of course, the ever-present Black Widow. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's it's a fun game. It's pretty cheap to get into, too. The starter decks are like $14.99. Um, the packs are like 95 cents a piece. You get two die and then uh, or two dice and two cards in each pack. And your your packs are random. So you could get 
um, a rare, which is like a yellow, um, yellow line on it. You can get an uncommon, which is green, or you could get <coughs> gray ones. Uh, they have a gray line on them, but there's uh, Robin, Damian Wayne looking kid, um, Lex Luthor. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So there's some neat, uh, some neat cards. Neat. It's, it's, uh, it's fun to team up your different characters. There's Marvel, DC, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, Dungeons and Dragons. There's like a, an Avengers versus X-Men. There's an uncanny X-Men set. And uh, I think Age of Ultron's coming out next. So uh, right now there's a Justice League set. for Pretty neat. So it's a lot of fun. Um, doesn't take, you know, 15, 20 minutes to sit down and play a game, too. There's some cool play mats that you could get. Um, How many cards are in a deck? Or how many cards to be in play need to be um, in play? Really, to be able to play, you only need eight. Oh, wow. Eight cards, and then you can have up to 20 dice. So you can have multiple dice per card, um, like the uh, the Lex Luthor. And we should just do a show talking about Dice Masters, because it's really, and I'll show you how to play. Um, yeah, we can do on that. the bottom of the card, there's a little thing here that tells you how many dice each card is allowed to have. So, like, Lex Luthor is allowed to have four of his own dice. And what's cool is, um, regardless of whether you pull a rare, uncommon, or common for most sets, and I can't say mm-hmm. this for, for Yu-Gi-Oh! because Yu-Gi-Oh! is kind of weird that way, um, but you get you know multiple Black Widow dice, and you can use any of those, so you may get a rare Black Widow and a common Black Widow, but the dice are the same. The numbers don't change or anything like that. The only differences are the abilities on the cards. So a rare may have a more powerful ability versus uh, an uncommon, but their stats on the, the dice itself are the same. Okay. So it's pretty cool. pretty fun. But yeah, we'll do maybe next week we'll do a show uh, about dice masters and I'll kind of show you my different um, my different sets because I do have uh, quite a wide selection of cards from the different sets. So this is the yeah. Avengers versus X Men set, the very first one. I'm missing like 15 cards to have a full set. So, um, but yeah, then teach you a new game. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Cool. Anything else for today? No, that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Just yeah, we really appreciate it. Comic book, new comic book day, spectacular. <laughs> next time, next time I'll have a little a little graphic to put up. You know, new comic book. What do we? What do they even call it? New comic book spectacular. Uh, I don't know. All new, new comic book all day. different. <laughs> that's D- right. DCU comic call. All, all comics all the time. So. Uh, one of these days, we'll talk about movies and some of that other stuff, and point you to some cool trailers because there are some pretty neat movies coming out. Um, you know, we know we have uh, Ant Man coming out for Marvel next um, week. Next weekend. Yep. Yep. And then uh, six months from now, there's a new Star Wars movie, and next year this time we'll have uh, Batman versus Superman, and we'll find out if you do bleed. Um, so. And right before that, we get to eat chimichangas with Deadpool. That's right. That's right. That'll be pretty cool. I'm looking forward to that one. So, there's one um, other movie, but I'm not going to mention it because I don't know how it's going to be. Which one? It's Fantastic Four. Oh yeah. Well, you know, it's Fantastic Four. It's another reimagining of another set of characters. Whatever. Um, we'll all end up seeing it some way or another, even if we download yeah. it, which we do not condone downloading movies because that is piracy unless you um, buy it if you buy it you can download it so you're right okay. right yep but yeah actually we'll uh yeah we watched anchorman 2 though tonight that was really funny nice. <laughs> yeah anyway all right everybody we appreciate you taking the time to listen to us or watch us or or just ignore us or whatever um please share like subscribe do all that good stuff so you won't miss any of our comic bookie goodness that we throw at you every it's, every week it is it's sweet like candy I mean, so good mm. that's right on that note before we get too creepy we will uh, allow you to go back to your regularly scheduled life thanks for watching thanks <laughs>